have come together in the presence of Almighty God and the whole company of heaven to offer unto him through our Lord Jesus Christ, our worship and praise and our thanksgiving for the gift of this day, to render thanks for all the benefits and the opportunities for the past 63 years. We especially thank him for the light he has shone upon this institution and to ask those things that be needful for both the body and the soul. Therefore, let us silently remember God's presence with us now. Let us acknowledge before God our shortcomings and errors. O oh God, our Father, we confess before you our many failings, our lack of faith in you and in ourselves, our lack of response to the many opportunities afforded us, our reluctance to accept the many challenges of life. Deliver us from acts of thoughtlessness and deeds that may hurt others and ourselves. Make us always willing to do your will, now and forever. Amen. Set us free, O oh God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm is Psalm 116, reading from verse 1 through to 8. I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called, I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul. For the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now and shall be forever. Amen. We sit for the reading of the first lesson. Good morning, everyone. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, beginning at the fourth verse. The Lord God 
has given me the tongue of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning, he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I turned not backwards. I gave my back to those who strike and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting, for the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hymn, Lord, for the years your love has kept and guided.
for the reading from the gospel. A reading from Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, beginning at the 27th verse. And Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, who do you people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, and others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Christ. And he strictly charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for the sake of mine and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the son of man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his father with the holy angels. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray the family prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations and teach our leaders wisdom. Endure your church with faithfulness and our servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O oh Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us, your will may be done. O oh God, for without you, we are not able to please you. 
mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Grant, Lord, that we may be faithful to you without turning aside. Worship you without growing weary. Serve you without failing. Diligently seek you. Happily find you. And forever possess you. The one and only God. Blessed forever and forever. Amen. We now have a selection from our school file, which will be followed by our guest preacher.
I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me thank you, friends, for inviting me to share with you this morning as you celebrate your 63rd anniversary. These are unique times that we are facing, and so we want to give up thanks for being able to bring us thus far. So as you look to the past and use that past as a foundation for your future, let us hope and pray that God will continue to sustain this institution as you carry forward your work within this society. Let me also use this opportunity to acknowledge our teachers who have been giving their best despite the circumstances in these unprecedented times. And we must recognize that our teachers, their efforts cannot go unnoticed for they continue to enhance the lives of our children. Education, as we know, is critical, especially in this time of COVID. And so I just want to continue to pray for our teachers and pray for God's blessing upon them. We also have to acknowledge those students, both the new and returning students, and you know, wish them well, especially in these times, and advise them and remind them that they ought to make the most of the opportunity that they are now receiving. It is by no means easy, but the dedication and the work that you put in will pay off. In this time of uncertainty, as God's people, we are called to rise above the challenges that we face and seek to bring some stability to an ever-shifting platform. And so as we celebrate this morning and we give God thanks, I want to draw our attention to the reading from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 8 where Jesus speaks about discipleship. And I believe this reading is appropriate, especially for this morning, as we analyze what it, what it means to be a disciple and how that affects our very lives. So within that reading, Jesus points out um, to those within his hearing that there is something that we all need to do if we are going to call ourselves disciples. So he paints a picture to these people and at the center of his message is what we describe as the cross-centered life. So those persons who may call themselves disciples must recognize that at the center of their lives is the cross. And we will explore a little bit more what that means. And so it is instructive for us to, to recognize that our life in Christ is a sacrificial journey. And so Jesus calls his, the crowd and his disciples together as he explains to them what it means to be a disciple. Now, earlier in chapter 8, Jesus had fed 4,000. He had a confrontation with the Pharisees, and he also healed a blind man. The crowd was therefore in awe and on edge as they waited to see what next Jesus would do for them. For many of these people were only seeking to satisfy their physical needs. But in explaining what it meant to be a disciple, Jesus was showing them a new path. He was opening their eyes to a new spiritual life in him and not only a life seeking to embrace the material. So discipleship, as we try to understand it, is not necessarily only about going to church or trying to fill up our offering plates, but discipleship speaks more about a life, a total life shaped in Jesus Christ. And so in order to live this Jesus-shaped life, we must see ourselves and our lives as the very gospel being proclaimed. And Jesus lays, how, lays out how we approach that. Firstly, he tells us that we must deny ourselves. Denying ourselves really means 
that we recognize that we are not the only persons who live on this earth, but recognizing that we exist in community and that everything we do, all our actions will have an impact on someone else. So this kind of denial to which Jesus speaks is not a denial where persons at length say, I'm going to give up eating meat or something of the sort, but it is a kind of denial which suppresses the human need to exalt ourselves over others and to be inconsiderate toward our brothers and sisters. So in order for us to truly deny self, we must deny ungodliness, worldly lusts, self-pity, self-enrichment, self-service, self-absorption, self-praise. We must be able to deny our own reputation in order that God may be the focus of our lives. Because the fact is that many times we are unable to carry forward the gospel of Christ because we are thinking about our pride or we're thinking about our standing within our community or within the society and amongst our friends. So as we look at denying self, we ought to be able to put the needs of others before ourselves. And this type of self-denial is necessary, especially within our educational system today, because all stakeholders must recognize that we are moving towards the same purpose, which is to educate the nation. And it therefore means that we have to find ways to build each person. So we recognize that within our, our country, there are many children who are less fortunate, who are not able to have the devices to log on to online schooling or able to have data or internet on their phones or tablets or computers, whatever it is. And so all of us have to make an effort to see how we can assist even one person in being able to achieve their own sense of greatness. And so we have to recognize that we all have a duty. So it cannot just be that I want to build my child, I want to assist my child, but fail to see that other children also need the assistance. So denying self implies that we stop listening to our own voice, we stop leaning on our own power, and we stop trying to fulfill our own will. When we truly deny ourselves, friends, we realize that we have no will but God's will. We have no plans but God's plans. Self-denial means that we recognize our stewardship towards our sisters and brothers. And it is necessary to note our stewardship towards our sisters and brothers is not about me. It is about us. And this is a challenge we face currently within our educational sector, but it is also the challenge we face as it relates to the COVID-19 vaccine. Because many persons take this personal stand and fail to realize the implications that it will have on the greater society. Jesus continues after he says to deny yourself, he says, take up your cross. Now, Within Jesus' time, the cross was not necessary, necessarily anything to boast about because the cross at that time symbolized torture and death. It was the very thing that you had to carry and that beam that you had to carry would be the same beam on which you'd be executed. So the cross was not necessarily anything to take pride in. And so those in Jesus' hearing at the time may have been wondering why is it that Jesus is saying that we need to take up a cross because it's not something that's desirable. But to take up one's cross really means to be willing to pay any price for Christ's sake. It is the willingness to endure shame, embarrassment, rejection, persecution, and even martyrdom for the sake of Christ. It is something that we must recognize that in taking up our cross, we are making sacrifices, sacrifices that are necessary, not just for us, for other persons, 
and it paints a picture of our lives in Christ. And so as we take up our cross, a disciple of Christ to take up his cross, his or her cross, means that we are willing to serve Christ no matter what. We are willing to make the sacrifices for Christ no matter what others may say or do. And so the cross is not just a symbol of despair. It is not just a symbol of hardship, but we must also recognize that the cross is also a symbol of victory because it was this very cross on which Jesus was crucified and died. But because Jesus was crucified and died, he then was raised on the third day. And in being raised on the third day, that is where our eternal hope lies. So before Jesus' resurrection, he was crucified, and then he was raised from the dead. So the cross also symbolizes victory, victory over death. And so in taking up our cross, it means that we are fully assured of the hope that is wrapped up in our risen and ascended Lord Jesus Christ. The willingness, sisters and brothers, to take up our cross is the mark of a true disciple. And again, for those who would have given their time and their effort within this period of the pandemic, who would have sacrificed so much, these persons are examples to us because that is an example of cross-bearing. Jesus continues, after telling us to deny ourselves, take up our cross, he then says, follow me. And this is not just about walking behind Jesus where we may go, but it is about obedience and loyalty to Christ. And this is not a blind obedience or a blind loyalty, but instead, it is a demonstration of true faith and trust in God. And if we really reflect on the teaching here, we will note that in order for us to truly be able and ready to follow Christ, that the first two steps must be completed. We must first deny ourselves, take up our cross, and then we are ready to follow Christ. And so this command describes an enduring journey that despite the pitfalls, the obstacles we might face, Jesus continually calls us to be followers, which means that we cannot follow when we feel like or when it is convenient to us. For unfortunately, many of us only follow Christ on the days of our worship, or we only follow Christ when we think that things are going well. And when things are not going well, then we throw down our cross and say, we cannot do this. But to follow Christ is a radical commitment to follow him all the time, all the way to the end of our lives. And so discipleship is a call to forsake all of Christ. And the scripture reminds us um, of the example of when Jesus called his disciples. If you know the scripture, it says that when he called them to follow him, they immediately left what they were doing and followed him. So the response to Jesus' call to follow should be immediate and should be something that we are committed to throughout our lives. And in order to do that, we have to put away self, and we have to put away anything that will hinder us from living a full life in Christ. For friends, we cannot have it both ways. It is either we're going to follow Christ or we are not. Too often, we try to straddle both, but things cannot work like that. And so we are called to follow Christ unconditionally, without any barriers. We are called to follow Christ when times are good and even when times are bad. And so those who continue to rise above the challenges within our society today, within our school today, and continue to positively impact the lives of those around them are very good examples of what it means to be a disciple. And so if it is that we are going to be able to create any achievement going forward, 
if it is that we are going to be able to positively impact the lives of our students, of our peers, of persons within this nation, we must recognize, friends, that we are one people. And now is not the time to give up, but is now the time to persevere. Persevere in recognizing the value of each person, recognizing that each person should have an equal opportunity to achieve their goals and working towards that as one people. If it is that we're going to be true disciples of Christ, we must deny ourselves. We must take up our cross and follow him. For right now, the world needs true disciples. That is the only way we'll be able to overcome this time of tribulation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Uh, good morning everyone. Uh, we're having some technical difficulties with our master of ceremonies. Morning everyone, we're having some technical difficulties with our master of ceremonies. We're just asking you to bear with us as she reconnects to Zoom. Thank you. with you will now have a litany of thanksgiving. O Lord God, Father of all, we praise and thank you for the revelation of yourself through Jesus Christ as the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you for your church which stands as an instrument of your grace and glory for its bishops and priests who by their call and ministry are committed to the task of leading the way, proclaiming the truth and renewing life. We praise and thank you for the life of your servant, Percival, late Bishop of Jamaica and his vision for establishing this school to serve nations and wider world. We praise and thank you. We praise and thank you for the loyal and devoted labor of Sydney Howard Scott, 
founding principal, who for many years, through exemplary and courageous leadership, inspired both teachers and students. We praise and thank you, Lord. Father, you are the fountain and of wisdom and knowledge. And having called it, you equip. We thank you for Desmond and all others of the school board, for Marsha, the principal, the many teachers past and present who have given and continue to give unstintingly in the service. We praise and thank you, Lord. We praise and thank you that their work continue to find favor in your sight. God, our Father, you have called us in Jesus Christ to be co-workers with you. We praise and thank you for counting us to be worthy servants of yours. We praise and thank you for those who over the years have given freely of their time, talent and treasures and experience. The Board of Management, the Ministry of Education, the Parent Teachers Association, the alumni, the administrative and ancillary staff, and those who have served in any other capacity. We praise and thank you, Lord. We praise and thank you for all who have gone out in the world and who by their successful achievements and godly conduct have brought honor to your name. We praise and thank you, Lord. For all who have served faithfully in various ways, having contributed to the general welfare of the school, and having heeded your voice of welcome, to enter into the joy and rest of your kingdom. We praise and thank you for their work and godly examples. Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the and that it continues to strive in the spirit of its foundation. Help us to value what we are given here by both the teaching and support staff, by the love, care, and support of our friends and family. Teach us to live together in love, joy, and peace. In your work, give us a spirit of understanding and perseverance. In our prayers, the power to draw close to you. Finally, we offer to God our future, and the futures of those who will come after us. Amen. Father Summons, being that we had played the hymn already, we're just asking you to move over to the prayer of rededication, please. We'll now have a prayer of rededication. And now, Father, we come to you for your con continued help and guidance of the school. We pray that you will renew us, make us sensitive and responsive as we seek to do your will, recognizing that the true response of our lives and the lives you have entrusted in our care will only find worse in you. Father, we know our weakness and helplessness so we place ourselves into your hand, assured that you will keep us, take us as we are, and make us what you want us to be. Strengthen us by your spirit so that we will forever be in your service. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and forever be fragrant Veritas studio burning with zeal for truth. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
technology can truly be unpredictable. I do thank the venerable Archdeacon Winston Thomas for stepping in. We truly appreciate it. As we all can attest to the fact that God is indeed at the center of everything we do, we have to be grateful for blessing this institution. We are indeed blessed beyond measure, and we will continue to be a beacon of excellence in Clarendon as we strive to consistently produce optimal performance. And we are resolute in the fact that we will carry the flagrant flames traditionally, physically, and virtually. As we proceed to part two of our program, the pleasure is mine to invite once more the Venerable Archdeacon Winston Thomas, who will make us feel more welcome. He is the Chairman of the Board of Management of Glenmere High School. Madam Coordinator, Mrs. Stephanie Blair, Sister Adrienne Roberts, Chairman, Chaplain of the School, Middle of the Board of Management of Glenmere High School. Mr. Guest Homilis, the Reverend Captain Dwayne Blackwood, Madam Principal, Dr. Marsha Smallin, Mrs. Vice Principals, Dana Von Hales and Howard Edwards, members of staff, academic, administrative, and ancillary. Mrs. Francine Rooms, president and member of the PTA. Mr. Members of the Past Students Association, students of Glenmere High School, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is with a sense of duty, privilege, and pride that I'm here today to extend our kind and cordial welcome to all of you as we take time to celebrate Founders Day. This is done in memory of our distinguished and revered servant of God, the right Reverend Dr. Percival William Gibson of blessed memory, the founder of our school. We must pause to say a word of commendation and thanks to the principal and staff for conceiving the idea of this virtual celebration and for its execution despite the technical challenges. One of the things that we learn in this pandemic is that we sharpen our skills in the use of technology. I am principal and staff, thank you. We must know that we have more than 1,000 persons tuned in, participating in this virtual ceremony. Today, September 15, is for us a glen mirror a red letter day. On this day annually, we remember with thanksgiving and love our founder, Percival William Gibson, who in response to the call from God, sought to have a free school established in this town of Mapen, where the likes of you and me could dare to and can dare to dream and be leaders, to be leaders and shakers of the world, and to walk the halls and corridors of power and decision making. Through the vision of Bishop Gibson, the town of Mapen, the country of Jamaica, and indeed the world, have become better places because all of you who have benefited by walking through the campus and the walls of Glenmere, have dared to embrace the opportunities afforded you and have made your mark on the world stage of success. The world is a better place because of your contribution. 
the annals of the school are full of success stories of the graduates. We read of them daily. They have made us proud. And you students who are passing through at this time, will pledge yourselves to follow in their steps. You will join the band of successful alumni, past students, and wherever you are in the world, will let the flag on flag fly. So today, we honor the late Bishop Gibson. Today, we honor those who have made it, made it their duty to make sure his legacy lives on and the dream he had in founding the school is fulfilled. You are here today, the 1,000 plus of you, to stand in solidarity with us and we dare to succeed in our mission and vision. We salute the principal and staff, the past and present students. We salute parents who have made the sacrifice needed to ensure the success of their students. There is lined up for us today a program of activities for the rest of the morning. I invite you to stay with us and share in it and enjoy the offerings. So ladies and gentlemen, with these words, I bid you cordial and warm welcome. Thank you so much to the Venerable Archdeacon Winston Thomas for that warm and heartfelt welcome, as well as that charge to our students, indeed to whom much is given much is expected, but I am confident that the legacy of Glenmere High School will live on and we will wave that flagrant flag forever high. So now we will hear from the principal of Glenmere High School, a powered up and phenomenal leader who continues to push, to press and to persevere. She is an alumna of this institution and she continues to lead with love and she challenges us to be the best possible versions of ourselves. I invite Dr. Marcia Smalling to give remarks. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Sibler Allen. Archdeacon Winston Thomas, um, Chairman of the Board of Management, Reverend Captain Dwayne Blackwood, our guest preacher this morning, Sister Alvarine Roberts, our distinguished vice principals, other members of the academic administrative and ancillary staff, our special guests from Mushet High School, St. Hughes High School, and St. Hilda's Diocesan High School, our students, parents, and distinguished alumni. I greet you well, and I know you will join me in saying, Happy 63rd anniversary to the hub of excellence, Glenmuir High School. And so this morning, I penned a note to our founders. And here goes. Dear founders, today, September 15, we take a pause to celebrate a cause because of its global impact and the courage, commitment, and care to keep it intact. Today, September 15, we take a pause to stand together to give a rousing round of applause for a cause that's characterized by selflessness and the spirit of resilience, truth, boldness, and giftedness. Today, September 15, we honor you through our commitment to carry the flagrant flame without the fear of trepidation or condemnation, but with an unshakable, unmovable spirit of pride, gratitude, and loyalty. Today, September 15, we proclaim flagrant veritate studio burning with a zeal for truth. 
Mrs. Meikle, I want to thank you and your team for putting this together. It is 63 years, and I will continue to say that we have far more than 63 reasons to celebrate this occasion. I know God will continue to bless us so that we will carry that flame with pride and that it will illuminate the world. I declare it will happen. God bless everyone who is connected and let us continue to celebrate. Thank you so much, Mrs. Mary Allen. God bless you too, Dr. Smalling, principal of Glenmere High School. Relentless in pursuit of excellence and the abhorrence of things uncouth, a beacon built to edify the finest of our youth. Flagrance, Veritatis Studio, burning with the zeal for truth. As we continue to blaze a trail of excellence, it would be remiss of us not to pay tribute to our founders. We must reflect to move forward. And oh, what a journey it has been. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now have the founders tribute. A salute, salute to, to founders. founders. Did he know? Could he have envisioned? What would he say? That his school would last this long? That his school would have led the way? Who would have thought? Who could have known? That from a seed of humility and a vision so bold, Bishop Percival Gibson would shake the core of the establishment to reveal a truth untold. Could he have imagined? Could he have foreseen that his school, Glenmuir, would open the door of ingenuity and education for all, no matter how great or how small, no matter how poor? Who could have believed that on February 7, 1956, when Percival William Gibson was enthroned diocesan bishop of Jamaica and proposed to the Anglican Synod that they establish a school in Clarendon to follow the great tradition already started, that the then retiring principal, Dr. Sidney Howard Scott, would be called to take the mantle and realize the vision that was begot. Did anyone believe they would have succeeded on that rainy Monday, September 15, 1958, when Glenmuir opened its doors to 26 boys and 30 girls? Into three classes were they divided, eager to take on the world, a small institution with a vision for grandeur and excellence. And with God and determination, Dr. Scott, Mrs. D.V. Brown, and Mrs. Zatilda Morgan unleashed enormous zeal and academic potential. Did they know? What would they say? Could they have seen that his school would be a beacon and shine a light? to educate poor boys and girls as their God-given right? We think they had an inkling, but they could not have fathomed that today, from that humble vision, Glenmuir has positioned itself as a standard bearer in many disciplines, unparalleled in its dominance. Do you know? Do you dare to be uninformed? that Glenmuir has won every major award afforded in this our humble land. From academia to sports, football, tennis, and regional merit, from debate to school's challenge quiz, with national awards in chess and the cadet unit. In performance, with the choir there is no leap left to bound. And with two road scholars, this is the fitting jewel in our immense crown. 
Did he know? Truly know. What would he say if he saw the Glenmuir evident today? Would Dr. Scott be proud that his legacy lives on? Or would he challenge us to be even greater than what is the average norm? We know what he would say. And so, we recognize him and the many stalwarts for that vision on this, our Founder's Day. Did he know? What would he say? That God's vision was even bigger than his. But through his obedience, God has done this. So, on this Founder's Day, we'd like to say that what God does lasts. And Bishop Gibson, Dr. Scott, Mrs. D.V. Brown, and Mrs. Zetilda Morgan stand as testament and enduring proof that vision, excellence, righteousness, discipline, and education can thrive and flourish beneath a school roof. We salute our founders on this Founders Day, who inculcated in us the desire most urgent to walk in dignity and the pride to be different. With that lasting vision of excellence and the abhorrence of things uncouth. On this 15th day of the month of September, in the year of our Lord 2021, the Glenmuir High School family salutes Founder Bishop Percival Gibson. Foundation Principal Dr. Sidney Howard Scott. And recognizes long-serving principal Mr. Clement Radcliffe. Acting Principal, Mr. William Willis. Principal, Manasia Williams. Acting Principal, Mrs. Karen Radcliffe. And current Principal, Dr. Marsha Smalling. In this, its 63rd year. Flagrant's Veritatis Studio, burning with the zeal for truth. Thanks be to God. was absolutely beautiful and truly tear-jerking. I am an alumna of this institution and I am beaming with pride. It is John Dewey who said, we do not learn from experience. We learn from reflecting on experience. Glenmere family, I charge you to continue to reflect in order to grow, to overcome and to succeed. We have come a far way in these 63 years and our greatest feats are yet to be accomplished. To our current students, greatness has been bestowed upon you. Do what you must to ensure that the flagrant flame of excellence will never be extinguished. Without vision, we will perish. And here we are reaping the fruits of this seed that was planted so many years ago, 63 years strong. What a vision, such excellence, such zeal. What an institution. We salute our founders.
We will now have greetings from Mrs. Moralda Dawkins Powell, a member of the class of the original 55 students from 1958. We will then hear from Mrs. Sandra Bailey, president of the local past student association chapter, who will bring greetings on behalf of all the chapters of the past students associations. And we will also hear from Mrs. Francine Rooms, president of the Parent Teachers Association. And that will close our segment off for this, that will close this segment off and these greetings will flow unannounced. We'll now hear from Mrs. Moralda Dawkins Powell. Good morning, Glenmuir family. My name is Morelda Powell. I entered Glenmuir, one of the first 55 students in 1958. I was Dawkins at the time. I had a wonderful time at Glen Mill, and I am so happy and grateful to be doing this tribute today. I, pr I pray that all Glen Mill students and their family instead will have a wonderful life. I've had a wonderful life, and I pray that you all will have a wonderful life, just as I have had. And I wish you all the best for the future. Mrs. Blair Allen, Archdeacon Winston Thomas, Father Blackwood, Sister Jem Roberts, Dr. Marsha Smalling, other members of the Board of Management, teachers, staff, students, parents, past students, friends of Glenmere, good morning. I start by thanking God for today for his provision and for his protection. I bring you greetings on behalf of the Past Students Association on this, the 63rd anniversary of our founding. I'm very pleased to see that the pandemic has not prevented, prevented us from marking this important milestone. As a proud past student, I must congratulate my alma mater for pivoting and making the necessary changes for teaching and learning to take place in spite of the many challenges. The local and overseas chapters of the association have continued to support the school as we recognize that now more than ever, all stakeholders have to work together if the school is to continue to perform at its best. Madam Principal, we are heartened by your theme for this year, level up, produce optimal performance. And we assure you that we will do our part to ensure that your goals are achieved. 60 years ago, our founding fathers, and I salute them, would have only contemplated face-to-face -face school and face-to-face -face celebrations of Founders Day. The truth is they were not alone as up to the declaration of COVID-19 as a pandemic in March, 2020, we too did not contemplate anything other than face-to-face. -face. But these times create opportunities which we should grasp with both hands. Students, as I challenge you to take full advantage of your education at this August institution, I encourage you to embrace and respect our traditions, including our motto, Flagrans Veritatis Studio, burning with a zeal for truth. We are a great school, and even in the midst of so much uncertainty, the Past Students Association is confident that Glenmere will continue to shine through God's grace and mercy. Happy Founders Day, Glenmere family. Enjoy the rich program that has been planned for us all. Thank you. Madam Chairperson, Mrs. Bl Stephanie Blair Allen, Madam Principal, other members of the administrative, past students, Sister Jem, all other distinguished guests, current and past students, 
teachers, a pleasant good morning to you all. Today, the PTA celebrates with the hub of excellence for the role it has placed, it has played in shaping the lives for over 63 years. 63 years of being a premier high school in Clarendon and Jamaica by extension. As a past student myself, my joy is to see Colored always in everything, every nook and cranny that you go, Colored is represented. The PTA is resolute. We are extremely proud to be identified with this milestone celebration. Kudos to team Glenmuir. On this day, our hearts overflow with pride for all that the hub of excellence have accomplished over the years. We are guaranteed that the hub of excellence will continue to be a place and a, and a school that everyone wants to be associated with. As we celebrate today 63 years, let us continue to do so with pride, doing only what is right and excellent by the children. Teachers, I commend you for your excellent work that you do to continue to make our children live and work in a place of excellence. Thank you so much and do enjoy the rest of your day. Ladies and gentlemen, such eloquence, such grace, such poise. Well said to these three gems of Glenmuir High School. Thank you very much, ladies, for your kind words. And you know, I have come to the realization that Glenmuir High School has the most beautiful past students. I see that we age like fine wine. As is said, all great things must indeed come to an end. We may be approaching the end of the service of praise and thanksgiving, but it is by no means the end of this day of celebration. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so pleased to have had at one point over 1,000 participants who shared this momentous occasion with us. I must also acknowledge our special guests from our sister schools, St. Hughes High School, St. Hilda's Diocesan High School, and Mushet High School. The principal of Mushet High School, Sir Leighton Johnson, is also with us. We truly appreciate this gesture of love, and I understand that you will celebrate your 52nd anniversary later this month. I wish you all the best. I do hope that I haven't missed any other school who is here with us. And if I have, I acknowledge you and I welcome you and I thank you for sharing with us this morning. I extend thanks to everyone who has shared on today's program. Special thanks to Sister Roberts for officiating the service. To Reverend Captain Dwayne Blackwood, who reminded us that we should remove pride, self-praise, and desist from exalting ourselves. If we truly love Christ, and if we are loyal to him, we will deny ourselves and think of other persons in our immediate communities and the world at large. God must indeed be the center of our lives. Thank you to the Venerable Archdeacon Winston Thomas for welcoming us, to Dr. Smalling for her remarks, and to every single person was read, brought greetings, sung, or shared in one way or the other. You have added much value to the program. Kudos to the organizers and the planning committee as well, who have worked assiduously behind the scenes to ensure that today's program was a success. And of course, to our technical administrator and our resident DJ, DJ Larry, we love and value you very much. Finally, to our audience, our special guests, administrators, members of staff, parents, students, past students, friends, family, all stakeholders, blessings to you all. 
we are 63 strong. Cheers to many more years of greatness to come. At this moment, we will sing the school's song. to the R, color red and semper flagrance. We will forever chant. I'm a proud past student, a proud past student of the class of hem, hem, hem. And this is hands down the best school in Jamaica, flagrance forever. Gratitude is a must. Despite the global pandemic, we have so much to be thankful for. I am grateful that we can gather virtually to celebrate the stalwarts and the achievements of this institution. As I said, I am beaming with pride. It is therefore quite fitting that our closing hymn is now thank we all our God. It is one of my favorite hymns. But before we sing the closing hymn, I take this time to inform you that we will have some awesome presentations at about 11 a.m. in our upcoming segment. So we invite you to continue to share with us. We will actually have 
18 breakout rooms. That's right, 18 breakout rooms. And our presenters are distinguished past students who are experts in their fields and they will be connecting with us at roughly 11 o'clock. These sessions will be interactive. So come armed with your questions and definitely come prepared to learn. After we will have our lunch break and then we will be back for the best of the decades variety concert. It will be filled with fun, laughter and excitement as our past students will entertain us. You cannot afford to miss a second of it. We will now have the closing hymn. Now thank we all our God. It was, it's now, and shall be evermore. All glory, all honor, all praise be unto him, the author and the finisher of our faith. I am Stephanie Blair Allen, your moderator for this morning's program. Thank you once more for sharing with us. And as was mentioned earlier, I will now share the topics for our breakout rooms. Do not move a muscle. Our different topics are accounting, animation, the cadet core, communication, drama and literature, the diplomatic core, engineering, entrepreneurship, fashion designing, football, law, lecturing, medicine, money management, and this is specifically for our first formers, music, social media influencing, Spanish and international relations, all my estudiantes de español, por favor. I expect all my Spanish students to be in that one. And the final one is track and field. I am super excited to see what they have in store, as I said. All presenters are past students. After this, we will have our lunch break and then we'll be back right here for the best of the decades variety concert. DJ Larry, I now hand over 
to you. Have a blessed rest of the day, everyone. Thank you. All right, good afternoon. Uh, is it morning? Yes, good, good morning, morning, everyone. <laughs> good morning. Um, so in a moment, I'll be opening all rooms and you are free to jump in and out of a room whenever you do so. Um, there will be an icon at the bottom of, of the bottom of the screen that says breakout rooms. You will just click on breakout rooms, select the room you wish to go into and uh, if you so choose you can leave and join another room okay um okay, just give awesome. me a few more seconds to launch the rooms all right thank you larry no problem Thirty seconds to launch. All right, launching in five, four, three, two, one. All right, as I said, just look at the bottom of the screen. You will see a tab called breakout rooms you're able to go in and join the administrators as administrators for each room please do the same in order to join a room thank you Alright, so for those persons that remain here, you can just stay and enjoy some music.
I saw a tab that says breakout rooms and I clicked on it and I was able to select the one that I wanted to join. On my laptop, it is at the bottom panel. Just look to see if you're able to see breakout rooms with four cubes. Click on it and then select the room that you want to join. I'm not sure if this will help. I'm not sure what the challenges are. But I'm trying to communicate with Mr. Jones so that it can be rectified as soon as it's possible. We do apologize. I know that some presenters aren't able to join, but I'm still trying to reach out to see if I can assist further. Mr. Jones? Mr. Jones? Hello? Hello, Mr. Right. Jones. So, after doing immense amount of troubleshooting, and after being reassured that this would not happen, 
our Zoom room, our Zoom breakout rooms has crashed. Spoke to the rep up to two days before the event and he told me that each room could accommodate up to 500 participants. However, breakout rooms has crashed. I'm trying to close the room currently and it's not closing. Oh, wow. Um, so, what I can do for those um, facilitators, the teachers that are here, I'm asking you to just go ahead and create a Google Meet link and post it in the in the chat, please, so that persons can join. Okay, so I think teachers were assigned to be moderators for each room. So those right. teachers, right, please create a, did you say Google Meet? Yeah, Google Meets. Okay, yes. I was actually in the Spanish breakout room and the session is live. Yeah, right, but right now I'm trying to close all the rooms and I'm not able yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, I can't go back in. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have to end the meeting because the breakout rooms is not closing any at all. So I'm just asking you to rejoin the meeting in 30 seconds, please. Um, but Larry, yes, stop. Larry, yes, stop. So what about um those presenters who are actually doing their thing? Because there are presenters who are doing their um presentation. Does it mean that it's going to disrupt that? Yes, it is going to. Why? I, I wouldn't suggest you do that. But Doc, in order to get to those persons who are in a room without a facilitator, I cannot access the miracle room. So what if I create a link? What if I create a link? Even if you create the link, Doc, for those rooms who don't have a presenter, I cannot access them to tell them to leave the room. Oh, so they're actually, oh, I get what yes, you mean. Yes, their isn't right. Breakout rooms has crashed totally. I'm trying to close the room and I can't close it. I tried to go into the room myself and I can't do it. Oh. And this is after speaking to a Zoom rep after what happened the other day. And he told me, he reassured me that everything would be okay. Okay, okay.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to post the links to the different breakout rooms. So as you see the link, get posted if you require to join that room. Just click on the link to join, all right? Hello? What's up it to me? What's up it to me? What's up the link to me?
Ito is Blair Allen. Ito is Blair Allen. It's bed, what are you on?
All right, I'm going to I'm going to release the chat and I'm asking to allow only the teachers to post their links. So those teachers can go ahead and post your links. links will be posted please just adhere to the rules that is stated in the chat only links must be posted in the chat
Okay. Um, for all those who were able to join a breakout room, I am sure you would have learned a wealth of information. I was able to join the Spanish room, the music room, and for a brief spell, the medicine room. And I had a great time. It was good seeing my batchmates. And unfortunately, some of us weren't able to share in the experience, but it is now 11 minutes after 12, which means it is actually time for our lunch break. We will resume at approximately 1.10 for the variety concert. So I see in the chat that persons are asking for the links. I really do apologize for the technological glitches that we've had. It was definitely beyond our control and Mr. Jones is probably super stressed at this moment trying to resolve the issues. So I do apologize once more. So it's actually time for our lunch break. We'll be back at 1.10 p.m. for the variety concert.
uh, for those persons who are still connected the meeting is going to end shortly just use the same link to rejoin for the concert use the same link to rejoin for the concert